And let's speak to Philip Hammond's deputy at the Treasury. He's the chief secretary to the Treasury, David Gawke. Welcome to this special program. So, we've got slower growth, higher inflation, weaker tax revenues, squeeze living standards, spectacularly higher borrowing. What is the good news? Well, it, it shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody that as we go through a period of uncertainty and transition following the Brexit vote, that there are challenges for the economy. I think the key thing is that the government responds as, as is necessary. Uh, we've, got, we've given ourselves greater flexibility. We're taking steps to improve productivity. Um, but we're also doing this in a way that maintains credibility in our public finances. Well, so, how can it be credible when you're going to... This is only November. And in March of this year, you told us what you plan to borrow for the next mm -hmm. five years. You're now going to borrow £122 billion pounds more than you told us you would borrow only six or seven months ago. Um, well, that's the OBR's uh, estimate, and the OBR is very clear in their explanation as to why that is, and you know, they, they predominantly put that down to the consequences of the Brexit vote uh, and the uncertainty that follows from that, leading to uh, reduced uh, investment uh, and therefore uh, slower growth over this period of time. There are also some structural challenges that we face that Paul Johnson was talking about a moment or so ago about different ways of working and the fact that that uh, is, uh, brings in fewer tax receipts than we would otherwise have. So yes, we do face some challenges, but you know, the difference between March and November, well, quite a lot of, has happened between March and sure, November. But, but the question is, how does the government respond? Well, in 2010, you told us you would balance the budget by 2015. That didn't happen. By 2015, you told us you'd balance the budget by 2020. That's not going to happen. Now you can't tell us when it's going to be uh, balanced, correct? Well, circumstances have changed. Actually, the ABR says that uh, had we uh, had the Brexit vote gone the other way, they've produced a counterfactual, and uh, they say we would yeah. still be on course to have a surplus by 2019-20. But the circumstances are now different, uh, and we have to respond to those circumstances, and that's exactly what the Chancellor has Do you has set feel out today. comfortable being in a government, supposedly a fiscally conservative government, that by the end of this decade will probably have increased the national debt to two trillion pounds. Two trillion pounds. Well, I think you have to look as to why that has happened. And, you know, the, the, the principal reason, actually, yeah. was that we were inherited an economy where we were borrowing uh, records amount. Yeah, records what was the national debt? Well, what was the national look, debt? Look, look, what was the national debt when you inherited this economy? Look, the debt, debt has gone up. Andrew, very significantly over a period of time when you know, debt is essentially the accumulation of borrowing. We have brought borrowing down through a period of time which has been, first of all, difficult because of the performance of the world economy. Uh, we actually were on course to uh, eliminate the deficit well, by the end. We'll of never this. know now. Will well, we? that, that is what the OBR are saying today. I mean, I think we probably. You have to are doing more than doubling the national debt. It was well under a trillion when you came to power. It could easily be a two trillion by 2020 from a supposedly fiscally conservative government, which has inflicted huge austerity on this country. Mm -hmm. And yet you still have two trillion of debt. I mean, in other countries, people would be resigning with these figures. But, but what is the, the argument, Andrew? Is the argument that we have done too much or we have... Uh, okay. done too little because our critics often say oh you've cut too much and there's been too much austerity and then complain about the fact the that argument is you haven't done what debt, you said you would debt do. is too high uh, the reality is we have made a number of difficult decisions uh, that has brought our deficit down by almost two-thirds mm. you yeah, know there was a time I remember Andrew in <laughs> 2010 when people thought we were gonna have to bring the IMF in to bail us out but we really uh, yes I can remember people making I don't remember that, that. Um, uh, Ken but, Clark and George George Osborne made that point at a press conference a few days before the general election. I can remember make, others as well. Point. But the, the, the point is that we faced a crisis in 2010. But we did restore credibility. That was six have, years ago, and you're still borrowing ago. more than because of the, ever. Because of the scale of the challenge that we faced then, uh, we did maintain, we have managed to maintain 
uh, the confidence of the markets in the UK, which was not a given in 2010. I'm sure you would agree. Uh, and uh, now we face new challenges. Now, the question is, how does the government respond? Yeah, should we go chasing after the 2019-20 surplus target? Uh, our judgment is that that would be the wrong thing to do. That would be too uh, harsh on the economy, given the uncertainty okay. that we now face. Um, so I think this is an entirely pragmatic, sensible response to the circumstances that we're in. Uh, and that okay. does involve borrowing a bit more for uh, economic uh, infrastructure. A but, bit. But, well, £23 billion. Pounds, uh, but you're borrowing £122 billion more. But anyway, well, that's, that's, right. but, yeah. but Minister, isn't the, isn't the point here that, as Andrew's suggesting, you've been failing your own tests? And the implication from today is you will go into the next general election unable to tell the general public when you will balance the books. Well, we're unable to say when we will balance the books at this point. As the Chancellor made clear, the, uh, the, the, the rule is that we will... Uh, have the, def the structural deficit below 2% by the end of this parliament. At this point, uh, what we're saying is that we will uh, be in overall surplus at some point in the next parliament, as soon as possible. But our viewers should not expect that you will be going into the next general election, despite having built your reputation on saying you would clear the deficit, without being, telling the, to being able to tell the public when you will have balanced the books. Well, we, we, what we will be able to say by the time we get to 2020, it's difficult to judge at the moment because the whole point is we are entering into a period of uncertainty. The, the intention is to eliminate the overall deficit as soon as possible in the next parliament. We may know more by the time we get to 2020, but we should have that flexibility at the moment. Do you think in the end, by 2020, you should be able to give a much more definite signal than as early as possible to the public who voted for you on the basis that you were t there to fix the public finance? Well, the answer is... To be honest, we don't know at this stage because we, the very point is we're go going further. in. But you we're, could go further. Well, we're going into a period of uncertainty. I think it is right during a period of uncertainty. The pragmatic thing is to have that flexibility to respond to events. Um, you know where we will be you know, by 2020. Um, of course, we don't precisely know. So we would have to review. What's that. quite surprising. I mean, so, so George Osborne said that a, a debt to GDP ratio of 90 percent was not sustainable. That is the figure you are going to hit next year. So presumably it isn't sustainable. Well, I mean, one of the, the factors in there, as the Chancellor made clear, is that our debt numbers are made worse by some of the implications of what the Bank of England's operations have done, necessary operations. I'm not for a moment criticising that. I'm just making the point that, that that has boosted that debt number. But, I mean, there is an important point that we do have to bring debt down. Now, of course, yeah. I would like us to be bringing debt down earlier and faster. But we have to respond to the circumstances that exist in the economy. And the circumstances that exist at the moment is a period of uncertainty whereby we need that flexibility to respond. Uh, and that's what the Chancellor is setting out. I think that's a pragmatic response to these circumstances. Minister, there was one intriguing hint towards the end of the statement. The Chancellor suggested that the government might again look at its spending protections for some departments for the next parliament. So, in other words, he was suggesting that you might lose the triple lock on pensions, you might get rid of the ring fence on NHS spending. Well, we've made commitments for this parliament, mm -hmm. which the Chancellor reaffirmed. Uh, I mean, we always make these commitments parliament mm -hmm. by parliament. But that was a pretty um, clear hint that they've got a sell-by date. Well, th the point is that the, the commitments that we will make for the next parliament will be commitments that we will make at the next spending review. They're not to be made now. Uh, and, of course, at the point of the next spending review, we will have to look at how the economy is doing and, 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 and what is affordable. Well, let me ask you about the just about managing classes. I ask you because your government is the one that has put them at the centre of everything. They're just about managing uh, classes. Is it not clear from everything that is happening to the economy and what was announced today that at the end of this decade, the just about managing classes will be worse off than they are today? No, I don't think it is um, just about clear uh, because if you look at it, we've just had a, a period of time where... Um, Growth in uh, living standards has actually been pretty high. Uh, last couple of years in particular, we've seen wages up, living standards growing uh, very fast. It, it is the case, given that we're likely to see higher inflation, 
that there will be a squeeze over the next couple of years. I and the benefits that. are frozen. Um, but from 2018, we, we will see earnings uh, rising again. That's what the ABR is predicting. But I but come back, can, actually, let me, just get, let me get this point clear. Even uh, if inflation doesn't go as badly as you think, it doesn't matter for them because their benefits mm. are frozen. So whatever the inflation rate, they're worse off. Well, I think what you'll find, um, I appreciate not had a chance to go through all the uh, numbers yet, but I think what you'll find within the information that we have is that living standards will be higher uh, by the end of this parliament than they were at well, the beginning. Well, of, let me of, put... Of, of, well, let, let, I'm, but, I'm talk, I, I would suggest to you, Minister, that just about managing, the people who really fit into that are working families that need universal credit to top up because they're not being paid enough. Uh, to be able to survive. So they get some extra welfare benefits and they're still just about managing. You wouldn't put it higher than that. Even when you take into account the rise in the national living wage that is planned, the income tax cuts, as some of them come out of income tax altogether, the free childcare or the additional mm. that's been talked about, working families will be on average £800 worse off by the end of the decade. £1,300 when you take in the impact of the benefit freeze. Well, I'm not sure um, I recognise those numbers. One of the things that we have announced today has been the reduction in the taper rate of universal credit. Give two you, pence. Well, you dismissed two pence. Give an example. Uh, a couple with the highest earner on 30,000, a couple with two children on the housing element of universal credit, mm -hmm. will benefit as a consequence of this two pence uh, yes. matter by £425 a year. I've, I've, not, I've, take, not, I've taken, uh, by the way, the 2% that, the, that's the, the not 2 taper but, into but, account. The fact is, whichever way you cut it, mm. working families on universal credit will be worse off by the end of this decade. Now, you could argue that may be the, one of the prizes that has to be paid to stop borrowing getting way out of hand, but your government made the just about managing the centrepiece, the motif of this government, and they're going to be worse off. Well, as I say, I don't particularly uh, recognise those numbers. But the point, you know, it, it, I, I think it is important to say, coming back to our earlier conversation, is that we do have to get public finances under control. You've raised, the, you know, perfectly fairly criticism, or you should be doing more, should be going faster. <clears> but, you know, again, we have to strike a balance between... Fiscal credibility, reducing the deficit, but also ensuring that we have got an economy then, that can withstand but then some you of the cannot troubles ahead and, and help the just about You cannot that. grandstand on the door to 10 Downing Street mm -hmm. saying you are going to make the just about managing the centrepiece of your policies and they end up worse off. They, we're talking about people who are not exactly well off in the first place. But also, I'd, let me make this point to you, that one of the ways in which you know, ultimately we raise living standards and we have an economy that can afford world-class public services is by ensuring that we have stronger productivity. That's why the big focus of what the Chancellor was saying today was about productivity, the investment in research and development, in transport infrastructure, in housing. Uh, these are all measures that can ensure that the UK economy can grow more, can prosper more, improve productivity, improve wages and salaries. And that's ultimately the way in which uh, you help all of the people in this country. And, and, and that's very clearly what the Chancellor was arguing today. Laura? I was just merely going to say the problem that you have with that, however, is number 10, the Prime Minister has repeatedly set out a political aspiration, her political aspiration, that she will help people directly, that they will feel it in their pocket. Now, the Chancellor may believe that it's better to prioritise the long-term security of the economy and infrastructure, but right there, you have a mismatch and you have a clash between the rhetoric of the Prime Minister and the reality of what this statement has put forward. No, I, again, I don't accept that. I think you know, when you look at what we have just announced in terms of the universal credit taper, uh, which is not a small policy, um, if you look at what we've done with the fuel duty, if you look at one of the things we've done in terms of housing, the additional £1.4 billion pounds for affordable housing, uh, those are all measures that are going to help you know, ordinary working class families uh, in 
a period of uncertainty and difficulty, which you know, we discussed the, the reasons behind that uh, a little bit earlier. So, okay. yeah, again, it's, it's a balance that has to be struck. The long-term uh, credibility of our public finances, the long-term growth of the economy through you know, better infrastructure, etc., and also helping uh, the British public through you know, potentially a, a difficult year or All two, right. as I say. And, and I think that's a balance that the Chancellor struck very well today. Sounds like, meanwhile, they're just about managing. I'm going to have to just continue just about managing. David Gork, thank you for rushing over from the Commons Chamber to, to be with us. I know 